Sri Lanka, known as the Pearl of the East from ancient times, is a 65,000 square kilometer island in the Indian Ocean, just below the southern tip of India. It has a recorded history of over 2,500 years and definite evidence of forms of governance from the 3rd century BC since the Andhradapura period. Ancient Sri Lanka was a monarchy and the head of state was the king. He was also entrusted with the legislative functions. The king had a court of ministers to represent the interest of the people and to advise him. King Pandukabia made Anuradhapura a fairly modern city, the first capital of Sri Lanka in the 4th century BC. The forerunner of the parliament, the royal court, met in the evenings to manage municipal matters under an official called Nagara Guttika. During the 5th century AD, the royal court met in a special place presided over by the king. Ruins of an ancient royal court is visible even today at Sigiri. During the Polonnaru period, a special decorative building was constructed by King Parakrambahu for the meetings of the royal court. King Nisankamalla, who followed him, built his own royal court. Close to the waters of Parakrama Samudra. This tradition was followed even in the last Singhala kingdom, Kandy, where an artificial lake was created close to the city. After the rule of Singhala kings, the maritime districts fell to the Portuguese in 1505 AD, then came the Dutch in 1602 AD. And with the signing of the Kandyan Convention in 1815 AD, Sri Lanka became a British colony. However, just three years later, the British administration was disrupted due to a rebellion by the Sinhalese. As a result, the Colbrook Commission was appointed in 1833 to introduce reforms. On its recommendations, the two separate councils, the Executive Council and the Legislative Council were formed. Initially, both the Legislative Council and the Executive Council met at the building now occupied by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in front of Gordon Gardens in Colombo Fort. In 1912, the number of members in the Legislative Council increased to 21. Again in 1921 and in 1924, this number further increased to 37 and 49 respectively. On the recommendations of the Denomo Commission, Universal Adult Franchise was introduced to everyone over the age of 21 in 1931. The Legislative Council was renamed as the State Council, which consisted of 61 members. A land close to Goldface was selected for a new spacious building for the parliament and the architect was Woodson. The new building for the State Council was ceremonially declared open by Sir Herbert Stanley on the 29th of January 1930. Sir Stanley in his address said that he believed that the people would protect the independence and the dignity of that building. The Solberg Commission appointed in 1944 recommended a number of reforms in 1946 based on the Westminster model. Accordingly, the parliament consisted of the Senate or the Upper House and the House of Representatives or the Lower House. The Senate had 30 members and the House of Representatives had 101 members of which 95 were elected members and the six were nominated by the Governor General. The Prime Minister and the Cabinet were answerable to the lower house. On 4th February 1948, 
Sri Lanka attained independence with dominion status. The head of the state was the Governor-General, representing the Queen, Right Honourable D.S. Senanayaka, 